So now uh, we have a panel discussion, our first panel discussion of today on innovating in teaching, learning and technology applications, understanding the new demands. And uh, uh, I'm happy to hand over to Luis Aquilina from Malta, who will chair the session. Grazie, Jens. Merhaba, or Warren of Sinari Tayeb. Okay, I got some attention. So, good afternoon, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Um, I said it in Maltese, which is close to Arabic, so merhaba, uh, it's welcome, it's a warm welcome. Uh, yeah. So, uh, good afternoon. The panel discussion, as, as Jens rightly said, will be in the innovation in teaching, tr learning, and technology application. Understanding the, de the new demands. Uh, joining me this afternoon, we have Regina Falke from the Cologne Institute for Economic Research, Germany, Abdi Tioni from the Rift Valley Technical Training Institute in Kenya, William Silva de Paula, CONIF Teaching Chamber, Federal Institute of Mato Grosso, Brazil, and Robert Schuer from Fontis uh, University in the Netherlands. Uh, to kick off um, this panel, well, I was asked to give a, a brief, a five-minute presentation, no? discussion, really. And I happen to be an electrical engineer by profession. I have worked 22 years in industry, and I crossed over. So I was on the receiving end from, of students, of technical students and engineers, and then crossed over about nine years ago into VET. Um, uh, technology is here to stay. Now we're talking about disruption, but let's talk about a little bit about technology, and you're hearing, me from, you're hearing it from a technical guy. Technology is here to stay. There is no way it will go away. And it will get worse. The technological advancement of humanity is increasing at an exponential rate. So we have to keep this in mind very, very clearly. So whatever we will discuss today is not something, a one-off to solve a problem, but rather something which must be continuous. Humans look at technology in different ways, but actually, the aim of technology for humanity is basically to make life easier, to make work easier, and to have entertainment. If you think about it, it's really true. So actually, we call it disruption in one sense, but in the other sense, it's a reality that we cannot live without. So we've got to keep that in mind in context. I, in fact, um, tend to disagree with the word disruption in this context. Why? I consider technology as a natural evolutionary step that humanity is going through, and it will continue to go through throughout its existence. There is no way going back. I don't see humanity throwing away its laptops, tablets, mobiles, whatever, closing all accounts, no? living the old way. No way. So it is consequential that we must ensure that our teaching and training programs are always updated to current and future technological changes. It must be an ongoing process that render them relevant. So the relevance of our courses, which in industry we used to say about standard operating procedures, must be living documents. Similarly, for teaching material, they must be living, they must be continuously challenged and reviewed. Otherwise, our programs will not be relevant to the needs of the industry. And hence, we would be training people for unemployment rather than employability. Okay? Um, I will stop here for the moment. I, I would like uh, my friends and colleagues on this table to, to introduce themselves. I will start from... Regina. So, Regina, can you tell us something about you and, and your role? Yeah, thank you very much for the introduction and the invitation. I'm really happy to be here. My name is Regina Flake. I'm from the German Economic Institute, so I'm an economist at a private research institute here in Germany. And I work in the field of vocational education and training, so I do research on the German dual training system. We do comparative research. Um, 
mostly in the European context. And I'm responsible for a project which is supported by the German Ministry for Economic Affairs, which aims at securing a skilled workforce in small and medium-sized enterprises. So we try to um, support companies in yeah, finding skilled persons and skilling their own personal. And a big question is, of course, what skills are needed? How can they um, yeah, provide the right skills and digitization and digital learning are, of course, big issues for companies, but often they really need support in really defining what is needed. Is it really that every apprentice needs to learn how to program or are there other skills? And that are questions which we um, yeah, analyze and where we do like surveys in Germany and try to support companies in implementing um, measures for yeah, preparing their company, their apprentices for the um, digitization. Thank so you. thank you. Thank you, Regina. Um, Abdi. Thank you. Thank you, Luis. I want to begin by appreciating the invitation to join this panel and to come to Bonn. I am Abdi, like you've had, uh, Tion from Rift Valley Technical Training Institute that is in Kenya, uh, East Africa. And uh, I work at the Department of e-learning and external linkages. And perhaps uh, I'm going to speak to you about uh, it's going to be kind of a case study to say what the benefits we are getting from partnerships with Univoc and other partners like Community of Learning, uh, you know, a, a story of uh, success in the backdrop of uh, what you would think is, uh, you know, in Africa, maybe it's, it's all gloom and all that, but there is something good that is happening, and we are going to talk about, tell you about the stories that is happening, how we are helping uh, to take advantage of digitization and help the teachers to take advantage of uh, the platforms and opportunities that are, th that are there to ensure that we are ready uh, for the 21st century skills. Thank you. Thank you. Um, William? Okay. Good afternoon. My name is William De Paul. I'm from Brazil. First, I'd like to say thanks for Univoc team to invite Conif to participate from, in this forum. For us, it's a pleasure to be here and to share a little bit of, about what we have done in Brazil about TVT. We are the federal network of vocational, scientific, and technological education. So in Brazil, we are 644 campus. We offer vocational training and in, different, in different levels from basic education to post-graduation studies. Our course aims to meeting the needs of local productive arrangements and bring together vocational education, applied research, innovation, and technology transfer. 20% uh, of our places are reserved to teacher training and teacher license. That is the first point of my focus in this discussion because we, are, uh, we have a challenge there to, to, talk, uh, to work with a teacher that don't have a pedagogical strategy method to work with TVT. And another challenge is to motivate them, these teachers, to work with technological extension projects, apply the research projects, promote technical or scientific events, and work, work with innovation parks. That's the point that we are going to discuss with us. Thank you. Thank you, William. Robert? Thank you. Um, my name is uh, Robert Schuwer from uh, the Fontes uh, University of Applied Sciences in Eindhoven in the Netherlands. And also thank you for uh, inviting me to this panel in this wonderful city of Bonn. Uh, not at the least because this is the city where my favorite composer was born uh, almost 250 years ago. Um, you know who I mean. Um, I'm looking at, from this perspective, uh, the TIF, in the TIFET area, from, from my uh, expertise on open educational resources. Um, the last year, uh, a colleague of mine, Ben Janssen, and myself have uh, commissioned a study. Uh, it was commissioned by uh, UNESCO Unifoc on how open educational resources are adopted in the field of TIFET and what could it mean to, uh, to, uh, to TVET and especially uh, for improving the quality of the teaching and, imp and uh, uh, what does it mean to, for teachers and what does it mean for policies and actions on all uh, levels. And that's from the viewpoint, viewpoint I will take in this discussion. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. <clears throat> 
So, to start off our question, so basically, uh, we are living in a world of technological advances. Um, uh, I will start by directing the first question to Regina. Um, Regina, how do you see the requirements, the, the engagement requirements, the employment requirements, the industrial demands for skills developing in Germany? We've analyzed what companies think what becomes more important in the next years, and of course, digital skills become more important, but what was the most interesting result from our perspective was that it's not not the digital skills are those which are most important, but more um, like soft skills, like being able to communicate, to cooperate with other persons, and also that you have new mechanisms within the company how people can learn something. For example, we've learned from companies that it's really important to have like mixed teams regarding the age of the employees because um, we know that experience-based knowledge remains very, very important and does not lose any importance due to the digitization. So what we've learned is, first of all, that we should always consider also soft skills when we talk about digitization and new skills needs. But um, what we also found is that I would say for Germany, like nine of ten companies already use new technologies nowadays. And we've asked those companies whether they've already changed their um, in-company training. And most companies say, yeah, we've changed something. But when we've asked them, have you really intensively dealt with the question what this means for your providing training, it's like more than one third of all companies um, yeah, admit that they haven't asked themselves the question what this does really need, mean for their in-company training. So a really a challenge for company is that they know that they have to change something and that they need new skills to, be, uh, to re remain competitive, but they really have problems in really naming it. They say, we're open, we want to send our employees to training, but we have um, really difficult in choosing what is right. So this is a really an important field of action. Uh, very good. Um, uh, Abdi, um, Regina mentioned the soft skills issue. I am all in favor of e-learning, but how does e-learning, can e-learning support the soft skills issue where, where I think the, the human contact is, is, is very critical to be effective? Um, how do you intend to, to address this within the e-learning contest? Thank you. Uh, the soft skills. We call it essential skills training. It's very important to the human, uh, the, the teacher, the human factor. I mean, it's, it's uh, unbelievable or inconceivable that you could hardly have a teacher who is so proficient in the hard skills and deficient in the soft skills. We have to infuse this. And uh, in, in, uh, in, in my college, where, where, where I come from, we have partnered with, you know, strategic partners. In this case, I, have, I can, I can uh, give you a case study of Bovale and RVTTI. We are uh, partnering to train our teachers on essential skills. It has not yet uh, gone online. It is still face-to-face, uh, -face, but it's something that can be done to take advantage of uh, the, the, the partnership that is there to develop it uh, online because we want to roll it out eventually to the rest of the country, not just uh, RBTTI. So in that case, e-learning will come uh, into, uh, to help us to make sure that we roll out uh, whatever essential skills is important to the rest of the country. So it's very important what you say. Thank you. Um, uh, William, you mentioned teacher training. Um, so we are in the, in the phase of technological advances. What are the challenges that you are facing in, in Brazil and in South America? And how are you facing those challenges? What actions are you, are you implementing to, to prepare uh, teachers for this, for this change? Okay. In Brazil, we are, you have some difficult to, to, to prepare teachers to work with TVT. Uh, because they are come from the engineer course, technology course, and don't have the pedagogic subject. And we have a talk, and uh, I share with them how can they 
work in classroom to motivate the students to, to use the technology, but you have to prepare them. So we start in this year to promote a specific pedagogic course for teachers that are going to work with TVT. Uh, we are working at, as a network with other institutes that promote this, this kind of a course in a distance learning. It's the way that you find to promote a pedagogic methodology to talk with them to improve the use of the technology in the classroom. That's the way that you, you find to work and disruption these difficult that you do have in Brazil. Okay, thank you. Robert, um, William mentioned the teacher training. Um, I know that you are very active uh, in OER. How does OER also um, aim for uh, tackle the, the pedagogical preparation of, of teachers? Well, actually, uh, OER is, very, uh, is, is, is used a lot especially for this goal. Uh, what, what we found in our research that there are many OER programs in TVET uh, set up and uh, executed. Uh, uh, one of the organizations who are doing a lot on this uh, field is the Commonwealth of Learning. And what they do, it is like a, a, a snake biting in its own tail. So they, they, um, they have to make teachers aware of the existence of OER, so the programs are to make them aware, but they use the same OER uh, in the same time to uh, teach those teachers or to learn those teachers how to use them, how to find those OERs, how to uh, uh, have the skills to adapt them to their local context, because that is one of the big advantages of OER, is that you as a, a user, it's not only the content which is freely available, but you also have the right to adapt this content and to redistribute it and to share it with everyone uh, you want to, uh, to, uh, uh, to your own local context. And that is very needed in a TVET education, the localization, for instance, uh, translation in a local language or uh, adding the local cases which are um, which are in, in, in place in the context you are teaching. Uh, so. so actually, teachers become aware of OER, learn to use OER, but use the same OER to also learn the technical skills. Okay, perfect. Um, coming back to you, Reg, you know, um, we, we, there is definitely a shift, an industrial sh demand shift um, in the context of digitalization. Um, what are the challenges that you are facing as an institute and locally? Yeah, as I said, companies really need support. In our survey, we found out that like 40% of companies say we need support in choosing training contents, and at least as many companies say we need support in choosing other new digital training methods, which my colleagues just mentioned. And um, in Germany, we always have this discussion whether new skill demands mean that we need new occupations in the dual training system, but what we found out is that this is not the main problem. Of course, we need like new training contents, but the problem is really the implementation. And when we talk about um, e-learning, we know that we have new possibilities, and also the companies know this, but the implementation is really the big challenge, because if we talk, for example, about new digital learning methods for the apprentices, which can support them in learning digital skills, everybody says it's really an advantage that you're, not, that you're independent of the time and of the place where you learn, so you can learn everywhere and independent, but if we look at the everyday work, we see if we have an apprentice of 70 years, he won't use the software just because he can do it at Saturday in the evening. So you still need like organizing it, you need times when you say use those new digital technologies, you need like trainers which are prepared to use this and to put it in a broader context and these are really the challenges on the workflow to have the personnel who can implement it so that they can benefit from the new learning technologies and so that they can prepare their apprentices. I see. I see. So the, the involvement of the stakeholders does present its challenges. Um, Abdi, as regards the, the e-learning, uh, which I think it's, it's, it's quite, quite a first for, for, for Kenya and, and, uh, and your region, 
um, what is your expected response for, from the student population? And Thank you. Thank you, Luis. Uh, the, the challenges that we face are enormous, but not unsurmountable. There are, there are, there are, there are things, I think, uh, that can be worked uh, on and, you know, surmounted. Uh, sometimes your history, your, future, your, your past can, can be a challenge in facing the future. What I mean is we are coming from a backdrop of uh, so much dependence on an old system, so much dependence on, you know, classroom teaching the traditional mode of, of teaching. I'm, I'm so happy that we are coming from the strategy, strategy lab sessions, and those of you who are uh, in that session, you saw uh, a teacher struggling to, to, you know, to, to, to facilitate or to teach about Windows, to facilitate about uh, Word using the blackboard, you know, having to design and to, to sketch, you know, the, the screen. It's a very unpromising way of doing it. And, and therefore, we come from that backdrop, uh, but with strategic partnerships, with investments, uh, we, we are able to, 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 to face these challenges head on and with a degree of success, I would say. And therefore, I would say uh, it is important to work on them, to support the teacher, to support the, the students. Even the students themselves, it's not like uh, they are there yet. Uh, some of them are acquiring their smartphones for the first time, uh, you know, going, going forward. And, and therefore, sometimes it is even the student who is more proficient in using IT than the teacher, and therefore there are challenges of uh, teachers feeling like they would be uh, at risk of losing their jobs. And therefore, challenges are there, challenges are enormous, but it's good that uh, we are working on them and we are attaining a degree of success. Yes, an, an advantage of e-learning systems worldwide is that uh, many systems are actually freely available uh, across the globe through the internet. So, so we do have, we do have uh, an e-learning platform even in more than a small country. Uh, we found it very, very effective for uh, lifelong learning, for, for people to study and upskill from the comfort of their homes, and it is accessible worldwide. So we do have, we are still, we are starting to get hits and registrations from across the globe. So it's, 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 it's something that maybe your initiative can also have an influence not only on Kenya, but also beyond the borders of Kenya. Can, um, I, can I add to that? Uh, because because e-learning uh, uh, can, can be a solution for, 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 for many things, for, for, but I'm more a fan for, for, for more blended forms of learning where you, uh, where you mix the e-learning the, the e part with, with the face-to-face -face part, and when you were talking about, we were talking earlier about the soft skills and mm -hmm. e-learning and soft skills, I think in, it is just in mixing this e-learning part and using e-learning where it is good for, mm -hmm. uh, and and the um, yeah and and the face-to-face -to -face part together, and especially when it comes to skills development, one part you have to. To, uh, to show that you, that you are mastering the skill. And if, uh, it could be an ICT skill, but it could also be a skill like, uh, like uh, yeah, have, having uh, um, whatever uh, manual things to do. So you have to go to a place where you can show that you master the skill. So actually, as, as a matter of fact, that is uh, exactly true, because uh, it's difficult to ask somebody to completely shift from class to class, you know, the face-to-face -face mode of uh, training to, to, to e-learning fully. So what we do is to encourage blending. You encourage blending uh, gradually. In fact, there is a, a course that uh, was developed and, uh, in partnership with Commonwealth of Learning. It's called Blending in the Classroom uh, course. It's an online course, and uh, most of our teachers have done it. It's a way of capacity building them. So it's, it's a way of integrating what they already are doing, uh, but progressively developing them into e-learning uh, uh, proper. So it's true, mm -hmm. it's, it's good to blend, it's, good, it's a way of gradual uh, uh, success. Yeah. Yeah, in fact, it's, it's, it's a very positive thing in the sense that true technology, though this is, this is really interesting, true technology itself, we are having the possibility of sharing knowledge across the globe and then giving it a local context. Yeah. And that is, that is fundamental. So it is, it is accepted that not all issues provided through a program done in, for example, in Mort and the Netherlands are applicable to Kenya. But then there is the local context adaptation, an adaptation process that could be beneficial to globally. Yeah. 
Um, uh, what is your opinion about this, William? Um, as I say, that we, we need to, to prepare our TVT teachers. And then and one action that it, you, you used to do in Brazil is uh, mot motivate them to work with a technological extension project, to be in contact with the, uh, the, the, society, the, the, the environment, uh, that the, the, the necessity, the, the society. And the other things is a applied research project, promote uh, product, service, and process enable studies to be effectively implemented in our society. And the other thing is technical scientific events to share the, the knowledge that we have in our academy to the, the society and improve the, the way that you uh, prepare the new professionals to work with TVT. Okay, excellent. Um, before going on, uh, we would like to hear if there are any questions from the floor? Any questions on the subject? Okay, not yet. Very good. So, going on. So, we mentioned the e-learning. We mentioned the technological advancement. Now, practice. Talking about practice, uh, what are the challenges faced physically economically uh, in a company or in, in an institution that wants to go into higher into technology? Regina, what are, what are the costs involved? In Germany, we have like the dual training system where mm -hmm. apprentices learn at the workplace and they learn in vocational schools. And in Germany, training regulations are formulated in a technique neutral way, which means that it is not stipulated within the regulation which machine or which technology has to be taught at the workplace. And this allows companies to always use like the newest technology. And we know from some large companies which have in their training centers like really newer technologies than at the workplace. So I would say some of the big companies are really well prepared. But we have really the challenge um, in particular on the level of the many small and medium sized companies who don't have this means to introduce the newest technologies. And we've already covered this issue a bit. For them, it's really important to not fall behind. And this can only be done, I would say, by creating networks. And we know that much less than half of all companies cooperate with other companies or other institutions in updating their training contents. And this is really a big um, opportunity for them to find solutions together to learn from other best practices and this is really something which we need to focus on and of course we have to look at the vocational schools as well because even if in companies everything is learned at the highest stand of technology of course the schools have to go with us the train or the teachers within the schools have oh must be up to date and this cooperation also needs to be in, in, um, intensified to, yeah, to introduce digital changes also in small and medium sized um, enterprises. In fact, um, uh, I, I liked your comment about the SMEs. Um, SMEs are many a time overlooked. Small and medium enterprises are many a time overlooked. In our small state, we have got about 30,000 registered businesses. 27,000 of them are SMEs, employing less than 10 people. I cannot see them buying and investing in robotics when a robot costs 50,000 euros, just a basic model. So, although there is a challenge of technology, we have to keep in mind that the reality that we are living in is that we have got Many, many companies, the majority of companies are SMEs. So although we prepare for the big companies which can invest, and especially the high-end companies, the other companies will not simply die out. They will still exist. And then we have to keep in mind also the national, the national context of each country. If, for example, Germany is oriented to high technology, automotive, a very strong automotive industry, there is a reality which is different, for example, than in Kenya, than in uh, Brazil, and elsewhere. And therefore, the context will change. But this is very important. 
Uh, Robert, as regards, as regards the OER program, as regards uh, the digital and technological challenges, what has been the response so far? How is the world reacting? Do you keep records of, of how many hits or, or, or logins or you have on the site? And what is the trend? Well, there is a, there is a wide variety. There is a, a vast body of uh, open educational resources available, uh, including the, uh, the, the, what's, what's maybe more, more common, uh, commonly known as uh, Massive Open Online Courses, MOOCs. Um, the, there, is, there is one uh, big barrier, and this is the majority of those OERs are very hard to find. There is not something like a Google for OERs, so you have to know your way around, and that is one big barrier for ad the adoption of open educational resources, uh, not only in the TVET area, but uh, more broadly. Uh, in all areas, this is, this is one big problem where the open world uh, is working on. Um, uh, for instance, by, I, I know that, 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 uh, that Google and, and, and the Creative Commons are, uh, they had plans uh, to, to, to do something about this. Uh, but there are, um, there are other barriers, so, so Regina also mentioned some barriers in, in, in adoption. Uh, our study found out that there are uh, uh, other barriers which are not so directly located to the OERs, uh, but, but are more uh, uh, like the majority or many of the TVET teachers and trainers don't have an educational background. So the whole discussion about openness is not something they are familiar with. The, uh, as I said earlier, there are insufficient ICT skills to do the uh, necessary repurposing of those OERs and adapting it to the local context. The, when you talk about OERs, OERs can be reused uh, all over the world, but then you have your cultural and your language issues, which have to be taken into account. So not all OERs are suited in all parts of the world. Um, an inadequate ICT infrastructure. You see that more and more uh, uh, the, the, the mobile uh, network is, is, uh, should be a network where those OERs could be used because the, the, wide, the OERs or the um, cell phones are much more widespread than these devices or the tablets. Mm -hmm. so, uh, but, but many OERs are not adapted to be used uh, uh, in, in, in a good way on mobile, on mobile phones. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, well, for adoption by teachers, because teachers are, at the end of the day, the, the people who should do it, they have a high teaching load. So where do they find the time to do this? Mm -hmm. And uh, last but not least, most OERs and most uh, MOOCs, they are also targeting self-learners, so learners who have the self-regulating skills to learn by themselves, but many of the, uh, uh, of the, 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 the teachers or many of the users, the, the, the students, learners in the TVET area don't possess those skills, so they always need a teacher or a trainer. So for the learners, the availability of OERs, there is an availability, but it is hard to use them. Okay. Uh, one of the, uh, 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 there are exceptions, uh, and, and one of the exceptions, uh, one of the um, people we interviewed, uh, and I, I, I remember this, his, his, his saying because it was, it was very illustrative, YouTube is the largest TVET trainer, TVET teaching area in the world without a single teacher. Mm -hmm. So maybe you can think about this. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Louis, one example for that Robert said. Uh, we work in Brazil with innovation parks. In these parks, we have five in Brazil. We uh, promote projects, and these projects are carried out by students, teachers, industry professionals, and researchers in Brazil and around the world. Uh, from the, the, the products from these parks, we use it in our class to improve uh, the use of a technology application, digitalization, in our class from the products from these parks. So it's, in a, uh, it's, it's kind of a way that you use to uh, promote our TVT courses in Brazil. Thank you. In fact, uh, Robert, I, I, I like your comment about YouTube. In fact, in my lecturing days, um, you find a lot of material on YouTube. Actually, various Indian colleges post 
lectures against lectures, complete courses, and they are available online on, on, on YouTube. And they're pretty good. They're pretty good. Um, but you know that they are pretty good because you're an expert. And that's, that's one problem. When you yeah. find the materials, you, you, you cannot be sure of the quality. Of you should course. be an expert to judge the quality. Yeah. So if a self-regulated learner finds a, finds, a, uh, finds a YouTube video, he, he or she should uh, re rely on the on uh, should find a way to rely on the quality of, of the content and be yes. aware of it that not all videos are, are, are uh, as good as, as as they maybe would like. It's, it's like Wikipedia. I mean, uh, you have to you have to counter counter check and you have uh, somebody to verify and validate what what is available. But I think that these are after all tools of technology then. And the, the technology that is causing disruption is also providing us with tools. And this is something to keep in mind. I mean, we have to keep in balance that technology is providing ways of learning, new ways of learning. And our process is to be adaptive and tap on these sources of, of information. So we mentioned OERs, we mentioned YouTube. Um, I have, I have another, another question for you guys. Um, how are VET systems preparing learners for the digital future? We're talking about teachers, there's them. But as regards the learners, how is, our, how is your individual country, your, your institutions, your setup, your educational setup, preparing them nationally for the digital challenge? William, maybe you can start from Brazil. Okay. Uh, in our situation, learners, when they choose to, to do a technical, a professional course in our institute, we know that, he, he, that they are prepared to work with technology. So they come to our institute uh, with this background. What do you have to do in, in our course during the formation? is to put the students in contact with these technologies. So you have to, 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 to be close with the industry, uh, the factories, to promote the student activity visits for the students to be in contact with this kind of a technologies and try to class and discuss with the teacher how to improve more and promote the entrepreneurship, the innovation, in a way of the, the, the profession that, that they choose to, to be. Okay. Yes, in fact, in fact I think it is, it is globally, worldwide. I mean, the young generation are typically tech savvy. They, 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 if you give them a mobile, a simple digital device, they get the hang of it pretty fast compared to us. And what about, what about you, Regina? What can you comment on this? Yeah, but like totally to agree, but I wouldn't really restrict it to young persons because it's more like an anecdote, but I've talked to a professor who conducted research how companies use new digital learning methods and the owner of the company was like, I have so many like blue color workers and I cannot give them a tablet, they don't know how to handle it. And he was really like, I cannot really use it for my employees. And then this professor who conducted this research, she went into the lunch break, saw the workers, and they were all sitting in a room watching a YouTube video on the new machine, which was just bought for the company. So they did like further training on their own because they were interested, they had the access to it, and were really willing to do it. So I think also among older workers, there's really an openness to use those technology, but what you all just said, I think more orientation is needed. And this is something where from my perspective also the schools come in because if you give like students a homework, like write an article about something, then they Google it and then they write something. But what is needed, for example, that they are able to assess how good is the source which I've used, how good is what's the background who has provided this information. And this is from my perspective, what is needed at the moment, because I would say the openness is there, of course, in particular among young persons, but also among older employees, because um, it's not such a big challenge to mm. use those tools. Yeah, there is. Uh, just uh, a part. Uh, for adult education in Brazil, we prepare not on methodologies, 
because they don't have this technology background. So mm -hmm. you have to, to take care about which kind of a class we prepare. So that's that I, uh, what I, I, I thought about the, 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 the teacher that's going to work with TVT have to be prepared to all the challenges. Okay. Yes, yes, Abdi. Yeah, I can add something uh, maybe from the perspective of a de developing country. It is important to have, uh, sometimes you might think some of this infrastructure that you have, you know, having Wi-Fi around is, is, uh, is, is normal. It's not normal in some areas. We are talking about schools that uh, do, not, do not even have the infrastructure we are talking about. So uh, to support the learner, to support the teacher, I think uh, colleges, uh, especially from Africa where I come from, must support, must build the infrastructure themselves. And I like what Majumda said yesterday. You don't go asking for money all the time. No. There are many other ways of making money, including uh, saving. Saving is one way of making money. So if you can save money as a college on your own to provide what you really believe is important, then I think it will, it will serve. Like what we have done, there is uh, what we call purchase scheme. Uh, where teachers are supported, they are, they, they are funded to buy uh, computers, laptops, iPads for, for use in, 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 in the classroom. And then they'll have to pay uh, back the college, uh, you know, kind of a higher purchase scheme. So that is one way of supporting both the, the teacher and the, and, and, the, and the learners. We also have what we call uh, the, smart, the smart classrooms, where uh, it's kind of a setup like this. You have uh, a central server with all the learning materials uh, in, a, in, a, in a depository, in a central place, and uh, you know, in, in a rotational basis, a timetable kind of, you have access to that room and you can go and access what you would otherwise not, uh, not access. So it's important to give uh, whatever is, is, is available and provide in a resource limited uh, kind of environment. Yes, very, very valid point. In fact, while you were while you were talking, I, I remembered on a program that was done nationally about, I think, uh, close to 20 years ago now. It was called Bridging the Digital Divide. It was a national program, and it was an outreach to communities whereby um, factories and companies used to use, open up their uh, computer labs, computer offices, set up labs for the local community to come in and utilize those computers to learn what a computer is, to learn what the internet was. I mean, it was, it was really a breakthrough. And it was a national program that was extremely successful eventually, because as we were saying, adults sometimes we tend to discount adults and say they will find uh, it very difficult to learn new technologies. Well, uh, my late father, started using a computer when he was 63. And he, I, I remember buying the internet connection for him. And uh, he was a poet, a national poet, and actually he, he managed to, he, had, he suffered from arthritis, but he managed to type all his books, all his poems, through that computer. So he started at 63, 64, and he managed to. So I'm sure, I'm sure that if we have more faith in, in the youngsters, I think, I think we can do wonderful things. Um, Robert, your, your environment is, 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 I think, different from Abdi's in this, uh, the Netherlands. What is the status of, of digitization with, with, with the young ones in the Netherlands? I consider it uh, rather high. Um, the, 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 the digital, the digital uh, equipments are already in primary education uh, in the classroom. Uh, they are used by, by those youngsters from, from seven, eight years. Uh, and what you see is, uh, especially in, in primary education, sometimes the, the, the teacher needs some, um, some upskilling for, for this, but, but, but they manage. And, uh, and, and this is continued in secondary education, vocational education, and uh, higher education. So, uh, but. Yeah, it, it is rather easy. We are a rather small country. Uh, we have uh, one of the uh, highest percentages in the world. I think it is 85, 86% of our uh, uh, nation has uh, 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 high, high, high bandwidth access to the internet. Mm -hmm. So, so, so uh, uh, our infrastructure is is excellent. 
Mm. And, uh, uh, and therefore, um, you see that the, 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 the amount that, the digi that our education uses digital uh, equipment is, uh, is rather high. Mm. But um, it, it, it is in most cases, it is used as an extension for, uh, uh, from, from uh, um, uh, non-digital education. So you are using, for instance, a whiteboard uh, as being a blackboard. Uh, yes. But then it's white and you don't uh, get these dirty hands by, uh, from the chalk, but, uh, but you don't use the, 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 the opportunities this device will give you. So, so that is something which, uh, uh, which needs some improvement. Uh, the, um, the digital skills from, from the youngsters, well, they are very good in gaming, but when, you, when their uh, uh, laptop is failing, I have two, two, two sons, uh, which are in their mid-twenties now. So you can say they have uh, grown up with, with, with these, these, uh, uh, these, these devices from young, and I trained them to, to, to mm -hmm. be there. But when there's something broken on there, they come to me. Yes. Uh, so, and that's, and that's something which means, is not, yes. not uh, <laughs> typical for me, but that, 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 that I've heard uh, uh, an anecdote, those anecdotes more, that, 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 in, uh, uh, that, that parents from, from, from uh, uh, secondary education, uh, children in secondary education, that they come together in, in evenings at schools and that they are talking about these this, this digital skills of the uh, uh, kids, but when they are asked, okay, when it is broke, who is making then then I'll I'll fix it then for them. So th th those are things which, which uh, need improvement. Yeah. Uh, and I'm not talking about the ICT students. They know much more than, 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 than we do. But we are talking about all the other students who are using ICT as a means to improve their job, or, that, or do they know? Because it is not only the ICT which is in, in, in fault, but all the, uh, the, the whole uh, um, uh, community or the whole society is, is, is uh, involved with ICT and will be changed by ICT. We've heard this now this, these two days. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, and those students need to learn much more about these future development. It is not sufficient anymore to know how this thing works and how word works, but you should, it is much more involved. And those more advanced skills, that I'm a bit worried. Okay. Um, at this point, are there any questions from the floor? Any comments? Yes, sir. Yeah, thank you for the discussion. Uh, we have this uh, challenge. I know technologies can be integrated in learning processes. But what about the costs in terms of uh, bandwidth, especially in the developing world? Because it's still very expensive. We've tried to use it in our learning processes, but uh, once the bandwidth is not good, the teachers are very frustrated, especially, and that's a big de demotivation. Uh, we have tried to use, uh, there's been uh, an organization who has been trying to give subsidized bandwidth, Reno, and uh, we thought that would really come in, but sometimes it's not also very, that cheap. Uh, so, so this uh, cost aspect, maybe yes. we really need a good discussion on this and see how mm. this can sustain this, uh, mm -hmm. uh, this uh, technology use especially in, the, in this world, part of the world. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Yes. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, thank you very much for the all member panels. Uh, so, uh, if uh, my question is about the, the innovation uh, in teaching, yes, say uh, the very, uh, say the title or so, say uh, what uh, we from the, say, the trainer side should do uh, and prepare in, in our teaching or our teaching of our teachers uh, to be, I mean, uh, to can uh, encourage our trainees at the same time and also they can use the um, digital, yes, I mean, uh, what, what, what we can do, say, uh, but uh, I prefer to say, maybe Robert can say, uh, help me, say, uh, what, any, any innovation in our, say, uh, teaching and, and technology that we can use uh, from, the, uh, from the perspective of, the, say, the teachers, yes, from teacher's side. Uh, 
Okay. Thank, you. Thank you. Any other questions before we will re re reply? Okay. Uh, so. Okay. Yes. Yes. Then. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Louise. <clears throat> Uh, I actually have a, a, a comment rather than um, questions. Mm -hmm. I remember when we um, entered so many workshops about the pedagogy late 90s in Britain, uh, a part of continuous professional development. Mm -hmm. And um, the, the, the intention then was really to teach uh, the teachers uh, mm -hmm how to use this new pedagogy and digitization that's initially at time uh, comparing to the conventional method of teaching. And I remember they usually provide us with some sort of caricature uh, in the workshop uh, about two gentlemen uh, and there is a, a parrot in front of them and one telling his friend, look, I've taught this parrot everything. So his friend tried to greet this parrot saying hello, and then the parrot didn't say anything. So he tried to let this parrot say any word, but, but he couldn't. So he turned to his friend and said, look, you said that you taught him everything, but he did not speak. He said, yes, what did I say? I didn't say he learned. I said I teach him. <laughs> the idea is uh, this interactive teaching in new pedagogy is, is a quite crucial. Uh, and I remember uh, early this year, listening to Jack May, the co-founder of Amazon, uh, of uh, Alibaba, Alibaba. Uh, mm -hmm. when he said that more than 30% of people, especially youth, are buying over the internet. And what the youth love will be the future. So the future is, as he put it, e-buying. And he said there is no goods in the future that made in India or in China or United States is made in internet. Mm. So the idea is that digitization, uh, e-learning uh, become a crucial part and actually we should prepare our students, our kids uh, for this technology in order for them to find career in their future. Thank you. Thank you, very valid comments. Um, as we said in the introduction, definitely the technology is here to stay, so these things will get more and more part, part of our lives. Um, uh, Regina, would you, would you address the first question on the cost and the infrastructure? Or? I cannot say so much about it, but I just can totally agree to it. And still in Germany, we also have this discussion, of course, on another uh, level, but still some regions cannot use those opportunities which are there to the same extent that others can do, and this is a really huge task which is addressed to our government and hopefully, uh, yeah, they will contribute to it. Yes, if, if I can comment on the, on the infrastructure. Yes. Luis, in Brazil you have uh, government support, but it's enough to do all the things that we have to do, but we will have a stronger partnership uh, our example from Brazil Agence for industrial research and innovation in Jews. So we work with them to, to, to support our experiment, our applied research. Okay. Robert, can you address the previous questions about the innovation in teaching? Yes, the innovation in teaching, um, uh, especially in the topic uh, where I'm, that I'm studying, where, where we talk about uh, open, openness, one trend in the open world is that uh, it's more and more the attention is not into the open resources, there's still a lot of work to do, uh, don't, don't get me wrong, but there's more and more, what does it do, what can it make teaching different than just you have free resources, but uh, the, the teaching stays the same, the pedagogy stays the same. And uh, well, this is this is a trend in, in development, and there is there is uh, 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 it has it has a name. It is called open pedagogy, but this open pedagogy, when you look at the definitions, you can find five different definitions. And uh, but the the main thing about open pedagogy is that you apply a form of more active learning from students 
in which you as a teacher are becoming more a coach in which you open up your classroom with the outside world using openly available platforms. And to illustrate, I can give you one example. It's an, uh, it's a, it's an um, approach which is used in the, in the United States where it's called don't cite Wikipedia but write Wikipedia. Students are learned about a certain topic in the field, but instead of doing an exam or doing some practical work, they have to write a Wikipedia article about this. And writing a Wikipedia article means you sh definitely should uh, should be uh, 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 on par of the subject on this topic on which you are writing this article, but because otherwise you are uh, you are finished. You are uh, finished off on this platform by the Wikipedia community. So uh, the quality of the work work in this way is enhanced. Uh, they practice first in a close environment, so they have this local uh, uh, wiki environment where they practice. But in the end, they have to go outside, and they have to meet the well the skilled world, the outside world in which to, they have to survive. And they learn in free, uh, uh, this form of pedagogy also free them, uh, give them for free, that they uh, learn those digital skills which you need in this digital environment in writing this Wikipedia article. And one advantage is that when you, most of our schools are publicly financed and the result of this uh, assessment, because it's a kind of assessment, is now becoming available to the public. Instead of this exam, which, in which you show, uh, in a classical exam, you show that you have your skills, and then that's it. Uh, but the, 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 the community doesn't um, uh, uh, profit for, from it. So that is one small example of, of, of a way, and there are numerous more examples of, of the way we're thinking about and development about uh, innovating pedagogies using the uh, availability of not only open educational resources, but openly available platforms in the world. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. Unfortunately, our time has run out. Um, as a final comment, well, I took some notes as we were, we were discussing and uh, querying each other. Um, definitely, there is the importance, everyone agrees, on the teacher preparation, which should be prioritized, which differs from country to country. The infrastructure required is essential because it leads to the availability of equipment and facilities for TVS students to learn. So these, are, I think, are the two, the two greatest challenges that, that, that are, currently, are currently being faced, especially glo talking globally in general. I would like, I would like to, thank, to thank my friends and colleagues now who sat, who sat on, the, on this panel. Um, if there are any more questions, please direct them to the Univox Center, which we will we'll gladly answer offline. Thank you very much.